Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Today I'm sharing with you what I think is the easiest crop that anyone can grow provided that you're in zones three to nine. In front of me, it doesn't really look like much. We've just got some random sticks coming out of the ground. They might look a bit like sunflowers. Well, you're getting there if that's what you're guessing. What this is, is Jerusalem artichokes also known as sunchokes and this video is going to show you exactly why I love these amazing and productive tubers and also why you should grow them. Jerusalem artichokes are firstly one of the most productive winter crops that you could possibly grow. Usually you start harvesting them around the start of December and I'll be harvesting them right through to the end of February. So you've got that full span of winter in which you can enjoy these tubers. Now, as you might have guessed, <laughs> they're not really that much of a no-dig vegetable. It's similar to potatoes. I like to treat them and treat the soil as best as possible. But if you wanna make sure that you get up all of the tubers, of which there can be many on a single plant, my record so far this year has been 1.4 kilos of tubers from a single plant. And if you don't bring them all up, what ends up happening is that they become a little bit too crowded and it's gonna impact yield. Because the good thing about true Samata chokes is that they're one of the hardiest kind of crops you can grow. I've never personally known them to suffer from a pest issue. In fact, in Chadam Natural Farming, they use Jerusalem artichokes to create natural pesticides and fungicides because of just how hardy they are. And so that means, unlike things like potatoes, which might suffer from either wireworm or they might suffer from blight, which is something none of us like, we can keep growing true tomato chokes in the exact same place for many, many years. So in the main garden that we film at, we've been uh, growing them in the same place for about 15 years. Now in our new site, this is the first year that we've put them here. And in this little section, I've already got half a bucket of tubers. It's insane. So just like potatoes, as you're coming through and harvesting through some artichokes, just try and pick out as many as you can. And they can be hard to miss because if they're coated in mud, they can look the exact same as say a rock like that. The other thing that is a massive benefit for Jerusalem artichokes, and especially if you have a part of the garden which has quite a lot of shade, is you can still expect pretty decent yields from Jerusalem artichokes. On average, I'm getting around, say, four to 600 grams per plant in a shady spot. In more of a semi-shady spot like this, I'm averaging around 800 grams to 1.2 kilograms. So roughly around a kilo per plant. If you're spacing your true tomato chokes, usually you want to aim for around 30 centimeters between each plant planted on either a diagonal or you can do it in trenches. And so that means in say a square meter space, you can expect around nine or 10 plants, which means around 10 kilos of food per square meter. We've got eight square meters here of true Samata choke. That's 80 kilograms. That's a huge amount of food. So this pretty heavy bucket is the tubers that we've harvested from this area, plus a couple of plants were already picked. So you can see the potential within them. Now, if you've never grown them before, now as in January into February is a perfect time to purchase some of these tubers. It's also, if you have a local permaculture group, guaranteed someone grows a bunch of true tomato chokes. It's a great way to just ask for say nine or 10 of these, and then you'll end up with this many at least by the end of the season. I've marked out a perfect square meter here, and I'm just gonna, there's the two ways of planting. There's either a trench, which works quite well if you're growing at the edge of a bed. Um, a trench, you wanna dig around 20 centimeters deep, fill with five centimeters of well broken down manure or compost, and then refill it. Now, with this, I'm just gonna treat each one almost as if it's a seedling. So I'm gonna, plant each one in its own hole around 15 centimeters deep, but I am gonna add a full handful of compost 
at the base just to give it a little bit extra. But another benefit about true tomato chokes is that they still crop in pretty poor soil. This was just agricultural soil beforehand, only had been grazed on, and we put a bit of compost over the top, but we didn't put any down by the tubers, and we still had this amount of yield. So I'm just gonna lay out the grid pattern now that I would recommend per square meter if you're planting this directly in the ground at home. In this square meter, I've managed to fit around 12 tubers to plant. I've then got the equivalent 12 to put in just as a visual perspective of how much food you can get with growing juice and artichokes. And this is just the first year of them growing. Now, I really want to push the boundaries with how productive these can be. And just in case you are watching and perhaps you're renting or something, don't feel defeated if you can't grow them in the ground. What you can do is you can get tubs like this, the ones that you grow your potatoes in, and you can plant one tuber in each tub and maybe grow some calendula or some nasturtium off the sides. That's a really easy way. They grow really well in tubs, which is very useful. And you can move them around the garden, uh, which is an added benefit. One of the other really useful things with how easy these are to grow is once you've planted them, effectively, you just, you just leave them. You leave them until next winter. Because they grow so quickly, they're gonna outcompete any of the weeds. Now, you can, if you want to, you can give them a bit of a water during really dry weather. You can mulch them with grass clippings. Those are all just optional extras. They're really probably uh, the most hands-off crop I can possibly think of. Because the same day that I harvest them, I can then leave one back in the ground where that plant was, and that's it. I can't think of something that is easier than that, that produces so much food. As a crop, these are much healthier to eat than potatoes. I've put the nutritional information down below, but there is one drawback. Potatoes win on storage. You can store them if you harvest them in summer, right the way through to February or March, if you put them in the right place. However, what happens if you harvest your Jerusalem artichokes is that after a few days, they start to dry and become a little bit squidgy. So a real simple way, if you want to get all of the harvesting out of the way and you want to plant everything, is dig a hole in the soil, pull them in, cover that hole with soil, and then put a marker where they are. So whenever I want some tubers, I can just grab it from there and they're going to maintain that quality. There's one other thing though that I, I love about Jerusalem artichokes, which I think beats potatoes, is because of their aesthetics. When you get to around late summer, Jerusalem artichokes create these mini sunflower-like yellow flowers that stand really, really tall, 10, 12 foot high. I just wish I could have spent more time here over that period when this whole area was just a sea of these beautiful little yellow flowers. So they can work really well because of their height to grow as a screen if you want to screen off part of the garden during the growing season. But just growing them full of flowers is enough of a reason, let alone all of the food that you get. The real question when you grow something is how do they taste? True some artichokes are rather remarkable. They have this amazing sweetness to them, this creaminess, and also this nuttiness. And those are three great flavors that work together very nicely. In a kitchen, they're really versatile. I think the, the best way to enjoy them is to just stick them in the oven and roast them. You can have a little bit of fun with trying to maybe hassle back them. You can use them to mash. You can make a delicious puree. You can make crisps as well out of true tomato chokes. And if you're a little bit worried about their side effect that can happen when you do eat them that everyone knows about and you build tolerance to, but I'm gonna be exploring this fermentation technique of fermenting Jerusalem artichokes. I found a really easy recipe. I'm gonna be trying that this week and I'd invite you to try it as well. There's a link down below to give it a go. And if you haven't yet and you're thinking about how you can make the most of your new upcoming growing season, check out this video because I outline 10 steps, 10 universal steps that anyone can use to create a really productive planting plan so you can have a great success and a lot of joy this year.